Welcome to this Roots Tech Connect video, Connecting Children to Their Family History. I'm Jana Greenouch. I'm a genealogist and a mother. My husband Brent and I have seven children between the ages of two and 18, and we are busy. As a mom, my days are easily filled up with household tasks, helping kids with this and that, and yet I feel a great pull to prioritize family history into our family's routine. Why? Well, one reason is that I love it and what you love you want to share with the people that you love. Another reason is that I've come to learn and understand that family history is really good for kids. It's good for anyone, and I'm not just talking about it being a fun hobby. I mean, it's good for you. In the past several years in the genealogy community, we've been talking about studies and the evidence that shows that children who have discovered family history, kids who know their family stories, are stronger. They're more resilient when hard times hit them. They have clearer perspective. They have identity and belonging, and they have more gratitude, so they're happier. You want this for the children in your life, and today I'm going to share with you four tactics for making this happen. Ideas for connecting your kids or your grandkids or your students, whoever the kids are in your life for connecting them to their own family history. Anytime we help children to connect their ancestors or their relatives, we're helping them to be stronger and happier. As I share my ideas with you, please remember this very important key. With kids, you better plan on keeping it simple and keeping it fun. And it doesn't matter how old they are. The teenagers need it to be simple and fun just as much as the toddlers. Otherwise, we start losing their attention and turning family history into some kind of a chore. For family history to be meaningful, it really doesn't have to be elaborate or take a huge amount of preparation. Keep it simple. Keep it fun. And that leads me to tactic number one. Incorporate family history into daily life. This can be as simple as talking about your family's stories around the dinner table. One really easy idea that I use regularly is to weave family history into the things that my kids are already doing. For example, we love to play Legos at our house. So when my son asks me for ideas about what to create, I may suggest he build a Lego covered wagon like the one our ancestors traveled in as they were migrating to the western United States. Or here you see a model of the Mayflower ship. My James, he's nine, he loves ships and Legos. And all I had to do was suggest the Mayflower, show him some pictures to inspire him, and tell him that he had several ancestors aboard that ship. The kids ask me often if they can build something on Minecraft, and I say, sure, as long as it's a house or a town from our family history. And they're so excited to play video games that they gladly accept my terms, and then they create awesome things like this. This is our ancestor Oli's house. Think about whatever it is that interests your children. Maybe they're artists. They like to draw or paint or sculpt out of clay and you can show them a photo or an heirloom from their family history and they can use that as their model. One of my older children is really into geography and maps. He likes to create maps and he's made several that are related to the places that our relatives have lived. He's using a hobby that he would already be doing anyway because he finds it fun and interesting and he's discovering family history at the same time. Speaking of maps, let me offer you another tactic for connecting children to their family history. Number two is travel. What places in the world are relevant to your child's family history? If you're lucky, you live close by to some of those places and you can visit historically important sites that have meaning to you. We are definitely lucky like that in our family. 
We happen to live in a town in the American West that our ancestors settled in the 1850s. They were the first people that started building this place, so we can talk about them as we drive to the grocery store. Some of their homes are even still standing, and we can see them as we drive by, like this one. And many of these ancestors are buried in the city cemetery, so we can go visit their headstones and talk about them as we enjoy a picnic together or have races to see who can find the stones first. There are many local museums and memorials that are easy for us to visit. And one thing I love to do is plan our family vacations or road trips to include family history stops. We visited New York a couple of years ago and were able to visit one of our ancestors' homes that is there and still standing. These kinds of vacation stops may not sound as thrilling to the children as Disney World, but uh, they help our kids to have visual connection to their family history. Uh, the sights, the sounds, the smells, the spaces where their ancestors lived, it matters. And by the way, if you can't travel or on days when you're just at home, using the miracle of modern technology, you can travel anyway. We can travel the world with our children via Google Earth or Google Maps. We can walk the streets where our ancestors live, visit their towns or the paths they traveled. And we can do it all in our pajamas from the comfort of home. Try that with your kids. For tactic number three, I want to suggest that you take a little time to think about what your kids have in common with their ancestors. Now, at first glance, that may seem like a challenge. The world our kids live in today is very different than the world of their ancestors. But since we're all human and we're all connected, there are bound to be some similarities. Kids connect better to ancestors that they can relate to. For example, many of my sons love to play basketball. They have an easy connection to their great grandfather who was a basketball player in college and an avid sports fan his entire life. They love that. Here's another example. One of my boys loves science and engineering. He, he knows very well that he may have picked that up from his scientist dad his scientist grandpa and his scientist great grandpa and his other grandpa's an engineer. Somehow the stars aligned and he's even named after some of these ancestors. Speaking of names, are your kids named after anyone on the family tree? If so, take time to point that out to them. Tell them stories about those people. Another way to make these kinds of connections is to focus on the branches of your family tree that really interest your child. For example, my son James here, he is really into soldiers and military history right now. So I'm, I'm taking advantage of that interest and I'm telling him stories about our military ancestors and we're researching them together and learning new things together. Here he is posing as our American Revolutionary War ancestor, which he thinks is very cool. Yet another way to find commonalities between kids and their ancestors is to look at physical or personality traits. James has very curly hair. I have very curly hair and Grandpa definitely had curly hair. James never had a chance to know this grandpa well, but he knows where he got his curly hair from. We talk about it. He looks at pictures and, and there's a connection there. Family Search has a fun tool called Compareface. As long as you have several ancestors' photos uploaded to their tree, their computers will do the facial recognition magic for you and let you know who you share the most features with. And this can be a pretty entertaining game for the kids. The last tactic I want to share with you today for connecting kids to their family history is this. Use food. Food doesn't just fill our stomachs, it fills our souls, it drums up memories, it makes us feel good. And when we can tie that to a child's family history, we're building a strong connection. My great-grandmother, Edna Hansen, died when I was about seven or eight years old. 
I have some memories of her, but the strongest memories have everything to do with the food she fed us. Her recipes were simple, but comforting. In fact, they were all very kid-friendly, and you might even think boring. These were things like cocoa and toast, but you had to cut up the toast in little squares and arrange them around the, the cocoa, which is on a saucer. Uh, orange cookies every Christmas and Humpty Dumpty eggs, which was where you would draw a face on a hard-boiled egg and sing the rhyme and drop it on the floor before peeling it and eating it. But to me, these recipes remind me of her and the sweet grandma she was. So I feed her recipes to my kids and tell them all about her. Homemade banana ice cream has a special place in my heart because our family always ate it on the 4th of July. It was a family tradition that my grandma created. So even though she's gone now and my kids don't have a chance to know her, we still make homemade banana ice cream on the 4th of July and it gives me a chance to tell them about her. And for my husband, it's a large plate of mashed potatoes topped with chicken and egg noodles. It takes him right back to Lovell, Wyoming and his grandma's house. And even though our kids never had the opportunity to be there, they do have the opportunity to eat grandma's chicken and noodle recipe. And we can tell them what it was like to be with her. And they'll probably feed it to their kids. It's that good. Sometimes when we make a family recipe, I may even take a moment to pull up a picture of the ancestor that the recipe comes from to strengthen the connection for my kids. It's also fun to try new recipes that come from your ancestors' homelands, ethnic foods that can tie them to their heritage. Food and family history, they just go hand in hand. I hope you're getting some ideas and seeing that connecting children to their family history can really be as simple as eating food. <laughs> Let me summarize the four tactics that I've shared with you. First of all, incorporate family history into daily life. Help the kids see opportunities to mesh family history with the things that they're already doing each day. Number two, travel. Take kids to the places that will help them to connect to their ancestors. Number three, find common traits or interests. Point those commonalities out to the kids. And finally, of course, number four, use food. It is the delicious way to connect children to the family tree. Now, just briefly, let's talk about the kinds of activities that work well for various ages of kids. And we'll start with the babies. The very youngest of children can connect to their family history. Here I am showing my newborn baby girl pictures of her ancestors. It's easier when they're already hanging on the walls and you're walking around bouncing the baby. We, we teach our kids who their uncles and aunts and cousins and grandparents and great grandparents are. That's what parents have the opportunity to do and grandparents too. They start to learn what family means. As soon as they can eat solid foods a little bit, they're sampling Grandma Hansen's recipes at our house. Babies and toddlers, they enjoy music, so you could introduce them to your family's favorite music, lullabies your parents sing to you, or even traditional music from the countries and cultures of your ancestors. Little kids love story time, and as they grow a little older beyond babyhood, bedtime stories can be a really great opportunity for you to teach them about their family's history. At our house, we found that kids really love hearing about what life was like for their parents when they were little. They also love to act out family history stories, to dress up like their ancestors, play games that their ancestors may have played as kids. And as they grow even a little older, you can start using some of the tactics that we discussed to tailor family history to their interests as you discover what their individual interests are. By six or seven, as soon as they can write or create things, Kids can do projects like recreating their ancestor's story or house or town. They can create a pedigree chart or explore online family trees with your help. As they grow even a little more, 
kids could interview their grandparents about their childhoods or even help you with some record preservation like adding photos or memories to family searches tree digitizing old albums or scrapbooks the earlier you start teaching children about their family history and involving them in the research the better teenagers can be a little trickier to engage especially if you try to pressure them into it they're they're busy but if you use the tactics that we discussed earlier older kids can connect to their ancestors too and it's just as important for them technology is their first language so teens can be excellent at finding information about their family history online they can be good indexers usually if you have pizza involved and of course any family history activity that you do as an entire family will include them. So keep family traditions and keep telling family stories around the house and around the dinner table. I've enjoyed sharing these ideas with you today. And there's one more bit of advice that I'd like to share. If you, the adult in a child's life, know your own family history stories, you will have a much easier time finding ways to merge them into your family's daily routine and your your daily life if they're fresh in your mind they'll pop into your mind when an opportunity arises during the day to teach them to your children and i found it's always best if i retell stories in my own words simplifying them to the level of a child's understanding it's one thing for me to open a big volume of family history and comb through the details. I'm kind of nerdy, so I love that, but children can't be expected to do that or even to listen to you reading some verbose history story. They need it in little bites, quality bites that they can understand, and then it will matter to them and they'll be stronger because you shared it with them. Children need this kind of connection to their own history. It has been a pleasure sharing some of my experience with you today. For even more ideas, don't miss the Roots Tech Connect video that my children helped me to make called 20 Kid-Friendly Family History Activity Ideas in 20 Minutes. You are also welcome to visit my family and I on our website, which is thegenealogykids.com or on social media. We're on Instagram at The Genealogy Kids and Facebook as well, uh, where we're always sharing new ideas as they emerge. So check us out there. Thank you for watching and I wish you and your kids the very best.